Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Financial Future, your go-to hub for all things financial. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that's been on everyone's minds, delayed checks and how they're affecting social security, including retirement, disability, survivors, spousal benefits, SSI, and VA beneficiaries. So, let's get right into it and unpack all the details. So, it's no surprise that we find ourselves once again at the 11th hour, with funds running perilously low. Lawmakers are scrambling to secure additional funding before we hit rock bottom. And why does this matter so much? Because it directly impacts millions of individuals relying on fixed incomes, like the ones I mentioned earlier. The big question on everyone's mind is, will this lead to a delay in your monthly benefits? This situation has been brewing since September of last year, although it feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? They've been kicking the can down the road, pushing back deadlines time and time again. But here we are, approaching March, and the situation hasn't changed much. The bottom line is, the government needs more money to keep the lights on. But what does this mean for you? The good news is, your social security benefits won't be affected in the slightest. No delays, no reductions, no interruptions your checks will keep coming like clockwork, regardless of the government's financial woes. So, rest easy, folks. Now, on to another hot topic, the Affordability Connectivity Program. You've probably heard me mention it before. Well, they've closed applications because, yep, you guessed it, they've run out of money too. But fear not. There's a glimmer of hope in the form of pending legislation. They're asking for a hefty $7 billion to keep the ACP funded through the end of 2024, possibly even into 2025. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While this would be a game-changer for about 23 million households, let's not count our chickens before they hatch. The political landscape is unpredictable, to say the least. So, what's the takeaway from all this? Firstly, Don't lose sleep over your social security checks they're safe and sound. And while the ACP's future hangs in the balance, let's keep our fingers crossed and stay informed. Now let's talk another topic click here to enjoy the full benefits of Jenny for only $4 with starter plan. First off, let's talk about the monthly child tax credit. Yep, it's making a comeback, and trust me, it's a game changer. Recently, There was a noteworthy interview with the IRS commissioner shedding light on how they plan to handle the expanded credits and deductions. The good news? They're aiming to get things rolling within a matter of weeks. In fact, they might even kickstart implementation as early as 6 to 12 weeks after the legislation is passed. Now, that's what I call efficiency. But here's the kicker Democrats are pushing for these credits to be distributed monthly rather than in one lump sum. And you know what? They've got a point. Monthly payments can make a world of difference for working families across the board. Think about it $300 or $400 extra in your pocket each month can go a long way compared to waiting for that annual payout. So, which option do you prefer? Monthly or annual? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Now, on to another hot topic the Employee Retention Tax Credit. This little gem was introduced during the pandemic to help businesses keep their employees on the payroll. But here's the catch it's been riddled with fraud and abuse. The IRS is cracking down on ineligible claims, with a whopping 95% flagged as potentially fraudulent. Talk about a wake-up call. Looks like some businesses have been playing fast and loose with the rules. But fear not steps are being taken to ensure that this credit is used as intended. Oh, and let's not forget about those pesky 1,099K reporting requirements. Republicans are up in arms about the lower threshold for reporting third-party transactions. There's been a delay in implementing these changes, sparking debate about whether it's the right move. But hey, better late than never, right? And speaking of audits, the IRS is making moves to address disparities in audit selection particularly concerning low-income taxpayers. Recent studies have shown alarming discrepancies, 
with certain groups disproportionately targeted for audits. It's high time for some much-needed reform in this area. And last but not least, if you've received a letter from the IRS about an outstanding balance, don't panic. It doesn't necessarily mean you're being audited, it's just a friendly reminder to settle any unpaid taxes. Remember, the IRS offers payment plans and other options to help you get back on track. That's a wrap for today, folks. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends and family. Stay tuned for more updates. And until next time, take care and stay financially savvy.